I got like 25 years with Mark, so I just, I've learned to block him out. I don't listen, really ever. Oh, you got um, breakthroughs and signings. His level just gets higher and higher the more you ignore so Brody, him. You no really gotta what, work don't, hard. Don't let him paint this thing with and all the nice signings. thing about Brody, being my son, is he's learned this already at home. So oh. when you're here and you have to survive Where's this, you have hey. to be able to completely hey. block him out. No, this is important. And as you can see, all this silliness said... right now, you see this? Nothing. Stone cold. Okay, but this you... ain't funny. So what happened so was you said that's what our plan is. That you get this car paint painted, all the cars and then once we're so done with match, that, right? we'll get the that? car pulled out, you said, cut okay. and buff, if they don't, if I don't get it undercoated, and then we'll bring another car in. That's fraud. So if you don't put them on there, will if you don't put them on there, that is fraud. You can go to jail for that. All right, Let me tell cut. you something. With this hair, you're not going to do well. In hey, I'm just, I'm trying to keep the kid out of jail. All right. You say something on TV and, it, and it's not true. You could get uh, sued for fraud or something. Do you really want to end up in prison because you told them you were going to put quarter extensions on and you didn't? No. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Buried deep in the Pacific Northwest, one team in Springfield, Oregon, takes on the impossible, finding dead Mopar muscle and bringing it back from the grave. Award-winning master of Mopar, Mark Warman, his cousin Doug, his daughter Alyssa, his best friend Royal, his painter Will, his assembly tech Justin, and the rest of the GYC ghouls are restoring resurrecting and recreating some of the fastest, fiercest, and rarest muscle cars on the planet. This is Graveyard Cars. Now, if you recall back a few years ago, a few seasons ago, I took a 1969 Dodge Charger 318 triple green car in on trade for a restoration on a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, 446 barrel four speed in violet car, rough car, rough car. And we are just now getting around to the point where it's coming through into the paint shop and we're able to do the final assembly. Now the 69 Charger, that was the one I was keeping forever and they were gonna bury me in it. They'll bury me in the son of a I'm calling my attorney right now and I'm having it put into my will. Was not for sale, under any circumstances. Not up for sale, I'm keeping the car for myself. Whoever buys it's gonna have to have a gun and a mask because it's not for sale. Not everything is for sale. It is not Let's for get sale. It, we'll get it. I don't know how many times I have to say that. It's not for sale. Uh, Will said I'd sell it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it exactly. Sell it. I think I'll uh, put it back together. I'm not going to sell, sell it. it. It'll be not sold the next for three sale hours. around here. He was right. I did sell it. You said no. You were going to be buried in that car. In I that needed car. cars for inventory. Oh. That's a perfect <laughs> car for the inventory. Now the Roadrunner was a rough car. Midwest car, very very rusty, mostly complete. Had the original lumber's matching engine. That's all good stuff, but a rough car. So when I say the car was rusty, here's what we had to end up replacing on it. We did the left and the right front inner fenders, the main floor, the four-speed tunnel, rear step wells, left and right inner and outer wheelhouses, the right-hand rocker panel got replaced, trunk floor, trunk floor extensions, rear cross member, and rear body panel were all rusted and had to be replaced. You know, while a lot of that sounds really intimidating, and it would be for the average shop, but for us, we do that every day. So once the guys were able to get moving on it, it went really quick. They got it all welded up, they got all the sheet metal fitting right on it, did the final tuning, and were able to kick it over to the mud room. The guys did a lot of mud work on this Roadrunner, and I know what it takes to get this car where it needs to be, and we got a lot of hours put into it. So with this car going the FC7 in violet, it's one of those cars, and we do this on all of our cars, it takes a lot of prep work, a lot of detail work, but with this particular color, if there's anything that's off a little bit, it's magnified because of the color. So it just takes a lot, little more time in the body shop, more time in the paint shop to ensure the final product is perfect. Once all the priming and blocking was done and the final fitment where all the gaps look good and the whole entire car looks good, at that point, we can finally start taking the car apart to start our jam work. 
You know, with our process of the way we do things, the crew that we have, the process goes very fast once you're done with that final block on the primer. It's instant jam work and we've got color going and then before you know it, we're putting the car back together. Something that's super important that my helpers don't realize right now is gun time and how important it is. You know, I had Noah last summer epoxying a bunch of cars because it's gun time. Now that we have Brody on board, he's doing the same thing. Nuts, bolts, parts, pieces, jam work. So it's just getting used to having a gun in your hand and it'll speed the process up for him painting the outside of the car down the road. So on this particular car, we had to two-tone the doors because the interior is black. The door's got to match that. So it's a great time where I can grab Brody, bring him over, show him what we're doing, why we're doing the two-tone, and to look at the bigger picture of things and have him help me prep him also. And Brody, you know, he's coming along great and doing a great job. But that's because I'm teaching him. All right, today's the day we're painting our 1970 Roadrunner. It goes to FC7 in violet, beautiful purple. This car also gets a white top with white interior and the dust trail stripe that goes down the side and the, I think it's the V21 blackout treatments, the stripes on the hood. So it's kind of gonna remind you of like Tony's car a little bit, at least the color combination. So that is actually super exciting. Uh, Will, there's, when, you when, got for, um, This is so funny for me because I go in the booth to help Will out. He thinks I'm there to mug the camera. I'm there to help him. I'm there to help his son. I'm the older guy. I'm the old bull up on the hill. He's the younger one, okay? Maybe I have something to teach him. You have a missed button. Oh, okay. no, no, you got, no, no. It's just I got a signing. So when it comes to Mark helping me out over the past 25 years, there's only been a handful of times where he's actually helpful. For the most part, it is coming in with his tape to be disruptive. It's his impressions of whatever movie kick he's on. Right now, it seems to be uh, Rocky's a big one for him. So more often than not, he's not helpful, and I've learned to just shut it out. And once you uh, can accomplish blocking Mark out, then you're actually very productive throughout your whole day. As you are, I was. As I am, you will be. And that's John Cusack's father from 1408 as a dead corpse. I got a tiny so, back here. Is what's cool, they're, last season, Brody actually helped me jam this car. Also, so you um, fast forward a little bit. So at this point, we're actually ready to get the final paint done. So this is the is first car um, where he was here still, start to finish. There's still guide code on there. And so certain things that we really like that. to work on. I got like 25 years with Mark, so I just, I've learned to block him out. I don't listen really ever. Oh, you got oh. breakthroughs and signy. I'm kind of caught in the middle of things. Mark's my boss, my dad's my boss. And they're both super goofy, so it's kind of hard to get things done. His level just gets higher and higher the more you ignore no, Brody, him. You no really got to work don't, hard. Don't let him paint this thing with and all the nice thing about Brody being my son is he's learned this already at home. So oh. when you're here and you have to survive Where's this, you have hey. to be able to completely hey. block him out. No, this is important. And as you can see, all this silliness said, right now, you see this? Nothing. Stone cold. Okay, but this you ain't funny. So what happened so was you said that's what our plan is. That get you this car paint painted, all the cars and then once we're so done with match, that, right? we'll get the car pulled out. Is this what it's always going to be like? Without you said, cutting okay. buff, if they don't, if I don't get have the undercoated, they don't have the and then we'll matter. bring another car. Well, that's fraud. Here's an example how not everything I'm doing is, is to play up for the camera. I legitimately found something. He said very specifically, and I agree with him, that the quarter extensions have to be on the car when it's getting painted. I'm getting all the parts of these cars at the same time that are done. So I'll put the car in there, and I'll put every part in there, and it is the biggest pain in the butt, but it's done at the same air pressure the same time, the same batch of paint that ensures that when the car's put together, everything looks the same. They weren't. I walked around the corner, they were not there. That's an important thing to miss, don't you think? So if you don't put them on there, Will, if you don't put them on there, that is fraud and you can go to jail for that. All right, Let me tell cut. you something. Hey, I'm just, I'm trying to keep the kid out of jail, all right? You say something on TV and, it, and it's not true, you could get uh, sued for fraud or something. Do you really want to end up in prison because you told them you were going to put quarter extensions on and you didn't? No. I'm just here to learn how to paint cars and I don't know if it's going in that direction. I really don't know if it's ever going to go in that direction. So Brody, what's the first thing we're going to apply? Uh, we're going to apply our base coat. Good answer. Good. Yes, we are. How many coats are we going to apply? We're going to apply eight coats. 
Wow, that was good. Yeah, we do. Eight coats. Do what we do, six regular coats and then two drop coats to make sure the metallic lays out even and it's not all model-y. Okay. And what does that mean? All model -y? Yeah. What does that mean? It doesn't look like a zebra. It doesn't look splotchy or stripey. But you wouldn't know that, so that's a good question. How much flash time in between each coat? We usually give it about 10 minutes in between each coat. Based on the weather and rot reducers, but yeah, good job. Let me tell you this, there is nothing finer in this world than walking out of the booth knowing you did an absolute perfect job. And have you ever done that? The 1970 Belvedere line is everything from supercar performance to supermarket efficiency and economy. And this bold, new, black honeycomb grill identifies the GTX and sports satellite. There are new horizontal taillights and rear deck trim on all Belvedere's. This is satellite. As for the distinction between models, dual stacked taillights are featured on GTX, Sports Satellite, and Roadrunner. Additional identification for GTX is the black paint treatment. Satellite features a silver applique treatment between the taillights. One of the cars that's kind of cool that just came through is our 1969 Roadrunner, owned by Don Jones Jr. Now, Don Jones Jr. is very successful. A lot of you on the West Coast will recognize the name. His dad had a Chrysler Plymouth dealership in Cottage Grove. Just three trees past the Village Green. That was the old commercial. Then one of the trees burned down in the summer, and the commercial went to just two trees past the Village Green. I thought that was kind of clever. Unfortunately, the dealership also burned down. Now, Don worked for his dad at the dealership in the body shop and in the paint shop when he was in high school. Junior was working in the body shop. He was able to earn and save enough money where he was able to buy a recent trade-in on the lot. He had bought a 69 Roadrunner, had some of his best memories like all of us do, right? But even today, I mean, he owns multiple dealerships and he wants to relive those high school years. And I think it's just fantastic that we can be a part of that, especially considering me and Dougie used to go down there all the time and dream about the cars on the showroom floor and, and out on the parking lot. I think it's even cooler that Will is able to work with his son on Don Jones Jr.'s car, just like Junior had to when he was earning money, right? So his kid is here earning money with Will. Don had to do the same thing to get his. Now, I think the big difference is Don Jones Jr. dad made him earn the money to buy the car, Will's daddy just gave him whatever he wanted, you know. So if you wanted a minibike, a YZ50, a Weisinger, I think they called them, go-karts, cars, the best everything, the best clothes, dress up like Santa Claus, a living dad, you know. Would love to have that. So it's just like, when does that list end? On this color, it's silver, it's like a champagne color, and it's a heavy metallic. So if we have any imperfections anywhere in this, the metallic will lay in that imperfection and it'll look like a scratch. And once you clear coat over that mistake, the only way you can fix it is by repainting it. So when it came to time to prep this car for its final paint, Brody did a lot of it. And it's super important that he listens and because I've been there where I've made mistakes and trying to put him on a path to not make the same mistake. So um, when you were super frustrated because I made you go over it over and over and over and why you don't even like this car anymore, that's why. Does that make sense? It's not that I don't like the car, I don't like the color. So you see this like right here? It. So when a car needs to be finished off in 600, if it's not done thoroughly, you'll get a sand scratch and then you're repainting something down the road. So it's super crucial and he even complained about having to prep this car because of how much detail work had to go into it. I know I've told you twice, but Third time's a charm. Oh, so I never have to do this again? I doubt that. 
So then when you have like spots like inside the wheel wells, they get wheel opening moldings, so it's covered, it's okay. From here, oh, from, so here's the thing. I'm working really hard because Brody had no experience on what to do. And it's very important that he listen, and he does. So then you have Mark who comes out, who knows the importance of what we're doing out here, and provides nothing. <laughs> My son does look like Kenny G, I get that. And it was funny. <laughs> you play it. I can't play it. You can play it, you're Kenny G, man. You won Grammys, yeah. I'm not Kenny G, I'm still Brody. I get it, my hair looks like Kenny G. I don't play any instrument. I don't even play the saxophone. I'm not very musical whatsoever. Have you ever won a Grammy? I have never won a Grammy. If I have won a Grammy, I wouldn't be here. You mean you could play, right? No. Is that I mean, nope. you took a band nope. or something, right? Nope. So is this going to be the new thing now? No, it's not a new thing. It's just, yeah. I got this for you. All I'm trying to do is have some fun and lighten the mood. I've talked about it for years. This place can get serious. Any job place can get serious. Wouldn't you love to have a boss like me, an entertainer, come by and have a little bit of fun? I bought a saxophone, all right? He actually spent money to be counterproductive. I mean, you get that, right? He actually got on eBay. Whatever he spent cost money to slow the process of work in his own shop. And then we'll complain later that we're not getting enough done. Put it on, Kenny. <laughs> I don't play. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do that, do. I just thought I'd take the joke a little bit further. It's, it's not a bad thing. You know, it would be helpful maybe if Brody didn't dress and wear his hair like Kenny G and try to trick people into thinking he's Kenny G. Then when I fall for it, maybe the gag's on me, right? Maybe he can play saxophone. So much detail work has to go in to certain colors before you can paint them. You know, trying to get it covered, three coats of clear. Now we can just let it purge out, and then tomorrow morning start baking it. But it's just, if it was red, any solid color, we would have had this cart. I think it's hysterical. Mark gets to torture Will the way he tortures all of us, and we get paid to laugh at it. I love Kenny G. Sounds like a lovely lady. Is he behind me? He is. All right, guys, cut. So he's really not helpful at all. I can't emphasize that enough. Nah, man, it's you, Kenny G. It's you. The 1970 GTX gets the big 444 barrel with 375 horsepower, standard. This 440 cubed sizzler with three two-barrel holly carbs to deliver 390 horsepower is optional on GTX and Roadrunner. The greatest engine option, the Hemi, 426 cubes, 425 horses. The air grabber is standard with the Hemi and optional with the 440. Vacuum operated, the air grabber sends cooler, denser air into the carbs. And cooler air gives you a more powerful charge. This is the first time I've sprayed A4. A lot of work went into the prep on this. Brody, you know all about that, how detailed it had to be. I love the backstory. I love the customer. I love everything about this car. It's gotta be absolutely perfect when we walk out. We'll put five coats of, five to six coats of color on. How long in between the coats? Uh, about 10 minutes in between each. Good. Tack rag it in between each coat. I'll get six coats on, and then the last two coats are kind of like what I call a drop coat. It's to ensure there's no, it's not model at all, it's not blotchy, anything like that. And then at that point, the base is done. We'll let that sit overnight, come in the next day, do our three coats of clear. Then we're good to go and done. I use the 2021 clear, do three coats on every car. It comes down to the temperature. I set the booth kind of colder, so it's a little bit slower, so it flows out a little bit better. So by the time I get around the car, mix up another batch, it's about 20, 30 minutes in between each coat, and then we let it dry overnight before we move it. Let's see if you were paying attention. True or false? 
the Plymouth GTX shares the same grill as the Roadrunner and Sports Satellite. Do you think you know the answer? Stay tuned after a message from our sponsors to find out. How did you do on this one, folks? True or false? The Plymouth GTX shares the same grill as the Roadrunner and Sports Satellite. If you guess true, you are absolutely wrong. The answer is false. The GTX features a stylish new honeycomb pattern grill, as does the Sports Satellite. However, the Roadrunner uses vertical fins. Furthermore, here's an irresistible invitation. New styling with functional design and a place for everything. New seatback latches are easy to release with toe pedal and a 160 position seat adjuster for maximum driver comfort is optional. While the guys were getting Jones's Roadrunner ready for paint, I was busy working on the drivetrain. This was a pretty complete car when we started. In fact, it had the original numbers matching engine. So one of the things that's working really well here now is all the different departments that are able to work on the different components of the car. So while the guys are working on the metal and the body and the paint and stuff for the 70 Roadrunner, Doug was able to build out all of the drivetrain, the engine, the transmission, the Dana 60 rear end. All those things are ready so when the car comes over here, we can put it all together and make it a roller. I need a pry bar. Okay. And most of you know that Dougie and I grew up together, so we know each other really well. I know his silliness and he knows mine. Recently, we were having a conversation. He watched through one of the episodes and he goes, you know, you do that intentionally when the cameras are on. You don't do that when the cameras aren't on to make me look silly, make me look crazy, make me look wacky or like I'm from another planet. I said, dude, you don't need any help, man. I'm telling you, it's natural for you. So I decided on the drivetrain installation, I was just gonna throw a body cam on, like the police use when they're chasing criminals down. Oh, you know, Tiny, right? They've used that against you on more than one occasion. So all we have is microphones and GoPros and body cam. Have that back. Go ahead and tighten those bad boys down. Ready to get yours? Yep. I didn't know what Mark was doing. Nobody knows what Mark is doing. I guess he's playing some hidden camera trick on me. How is a body camera strapped between my breasts with a Jane Russell bra hidden? How is that a trick? You can see it plain as day. I look ridiculous. It's not like it's a little pin in your pocket like the old days, like, like Agent 99 and, and Get Smart and all that. It's a big old box on your chest. You're just very anti-grease, and I don't know why. You've always been that way. You're terrified of grease. It scares you. Something about the way it moves or something just scares the bejesus out of you. <laughs> Do we go inside out or outside in on these? Well, I don't think you can get it from the inside out, can you? Oh. See, there's only two inches and it's so a three So we got it shackle. right, didn't we, for a change? It. You did really good, yeah. This is the first time I'm we got it amazed. right. Yeah, you really. So far, so good, right? Maybe Dougie was right. So I watched the bit where you were talking to Hunter about the rear end. Yeah. And you just went nuts on him and left his right and right his left. And then you had him doing division and all kinds of things. How does dividing a a, a, a number? An odd number in half make it an even number. <laughs> See, when I first watched that edit with Doug and Bubble Boy over there going over the leaf spring numbers, I thought, well, the editors are playing with it. They're cutting stuff up, making it look crazy. Well, the odd side goes on the driver's side, and the even side goes on the passenger side. Yeah, but both of the numbers were even. Yeah, but one starts with a three. So that makes it odd. Divide them by two. You divide them by two? Yeah, that makes it. That's how you figure out which is odd and which is even. No, no, Dougie crazy. I don't know anything about math at all, OK? Then why would you offer All I know that? is a nine is not even. But he's young and impressionable. He can a make three is not even. No, three is not even. That's true. But you were telling him it was even if he split it in two. But, it, but he's new. He doesn't know any better. I know. That's why he's counting on you to tell him the right way. And did I tell him the wrong way? You did. You told him to cut an odd number in half, and it would become an even number? Well, it will if you cut it right in the middle. Nuttier than squirrel excrement. You know how squirrels love nuts, right? So it's to be presumed that their excrement would be laden with um, nuts. No, it'll never be, no. That's it. Why don't you put it underneath here? 
because right there's going to be in the way of our shock going on. You can put it, yeah, look at that nice spot there. Almost like it was made that way. Huh. So what's the deal? Somebody couldn't understand my mouth? He had no idea what you were talking about. You're going to have him putting cars together backwards and upside down. Well, you understand the difference between odd numbers and even numbers, right? Uh-huh. Okay, good. One is not divisible by two. There you go. Three and nine is not, and neither right. is one. Right. So how, if you cut nine in half, can it be divisible? If it was four and a half. Yeah, but that's not an even. You four can and divide half a even. half into quarters, or eighths, or sixteenths, or thirty seconds. But how does that apply to the actual part number? Have you ever looked at the numbers on these springs? Yeah, I see the numbers on those springs. That one is a seven ninety-five. How are you going to divide seven ninety-five in half? You're not. This would be called an odd number which should be on the driver's side like it is. That one should be an even number, which is a five, which makes no sense at all, so call Tony D'Agostino. Okay, call Tony. I just work with what I what they give me. 2939965. I take them out of his package and I put them on. 795, I don't know. See, see what I'm up against? No, Neither nobody Neither one sees of them right. is divisible. Okay. Let's go put the front end in. Did I do something wrong? You're doing fine. Thank you. The overall, the rear end installation went fairly smoothly, and now we're able to move to the front of the car and get the drivetrain put in. That'll be really nice because we can put the wheels and tires on it. Once that's done, we can get it over and get the headliner and the vinyl top put on it. Side shift to the driver's side. Raise up a foot. Hold it, hold it. Turn your wheels to the right and come in about four inches. You know what I learned as we were putting this together? Give the people at home what they want to see, which is the installation of it. I like the GoPro look. I think you're getting some angles there that you wouldn't normally get. I think it, maybe it's even a bit more realistic than when the cameras are back just kind of shooting us on a cross shoot. But it went very, very well. Hold it. Side shift to the passenger side. Good. Up. Since Mark has implemented the use of the forklift into installing these drivetrains, it has made installing a lot easier to do. We can stand up and get to everything we need to do and clearly see what's going on. I love doing it this way. Hold it. Tip forward. OK. Hold on. OK. Got that started. Nothing goes out to has white paint on it. Everything is together. The drivetrain is in. Now the car is able to go over and have the upholstery work done. We did her, old buddy. All right. Get Dinner. this albatross out of here. Here's another high-flying model for 1969. Plymouth Roadrunner Convertible. It joins the hot cars in this class. There are three distinctive grills in the Belvedere lineup. This is Roadrunner's new grill with dark argent paint treatment. The seats are leather grain vinyl. Rich and beautiful, beautifully pleated. This trim is standard on the convertible and hardtop. Optional on the coupe with the decor group. You wondering why you're in here today? A little bit. Really? Yeah. You can't tell? No, I can. As me as the Italian stallion on the cover of life. Hey, yo. So what are we doing? Learning about stripes. Well, I've learned to, to tune Mark out, or Rocky, or John McClane, or Riggs, whatever he calls himself that day. So I can tune him out and go about my job and still do a good job and not slow me down. Brody's still learning, but Mark can still get to him from time to time. OK, so on this particular car with this particular owner, it was kind of cool because he reached out to Mark and he specifically wanted you to do the stripes on this car. 
You gotta point left, right, left, left, right. <laughs> what? That's, that is cool. So what it comes down to is you can't look at him. And not only can you not look at him, you can't smile. I didn't. Well, you did, and is what happens is that indulges him. And the second he gets a reaction out of you, then it turns to the camera guys, then it turns to my other guys, and then before you know it, no work's getting done because everyone wanted to indulge him. You have to block him out. You have to learn that trait. Super critical to work at Graveyard Cars. Yeah, so he wants you to mask them up and you to spray them. Oh, Adrian. Okay. How do you feel about that? Definitely nerve wracking. Yeah, it is. Because I'm not actually not gonna let you spray them. <laughs> Fair enough. Just because there's no room for air. So it's what we've done is I have this kind of roughed out how it needs to look. Mark went to the other building and actually got us the factory measurements of what these stripes are supposed to look like. This is that V21 that Mark always talks about, and on the 69s, it's two fat stripes. So they're about 26 inches. They'll go from here to halfway across this fender. We'll shoot them in the hot rod flat black. You only get one chance. You can't make a mistake, because if we make a mistake or that something was crooked, anything like that, we'll go to unmask it, and you'll see how bad it looks. Do you have any questions? Not yet. Not yet? OK, so with that being said, we are going to mask off some stripes, and we'll be good to go. You only get one shot to do stripes, because if it's off a little bit, then you're basically repainting the original color that you have laid down and then doing the stripes again. So it's one of those things where I just love to go in the booth, close the doors, just take your time, measure everything out over and over and over again, and then mask it up and shoot it. Roadrunner's standard engine is the 335 horsepower, 383 cubic inch V8. It has a high performance camshaft, unsilenced air cleaner, and dual exhaust. It's already got a wild reputation. There are three new performance axle packages too, each with a special axle ratio. All axle packages include the high performance cooling system, sure grip, and heavy suspension. Plymouth Roadrunner started out as a single model performance coupe at a low price. It became so popular that a two-door hardtop was added. We are getting ready to install the drivetrain, the much anticipated drivetrain, in our 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. This is our 446 barrel four-speed in violet car. How many of those were made? What? We've got the drivetrain completely built out for it. First thing that's gonna go in is the 354 Dana rear axle, which is part of the wet sales code, A A33. It's you. okay. Thank you. And more importantly <laughs> than that, we are trying to get Bubble Boy to evolve from Bubble Boy back to Vinnie Barbarino. Barbarino, yeah. And this could be the one. <laughs> if he pulls this off nicely, no mistakes, no, no miscues. I'm not saying I will, I'm saying there's a very good chance I will make you Vinny Barbarino. That's a jump. Hunter is doing a fine job here. He's made mistakes just like all of us, but he's trying hard. I was sad to hear that Hunter got demoted from Barbarino to Bubble Boy. That's a huge shot to have to take. Right. So are you guys ready to put a drivetrain? Uh-huh. Do you have any questions, Bubble Boy? No, gonna learn. All right, let's throw this bad boy in. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. He's going to be very happy to have his car back, I think. Yeah. Watch your head. You tall boys have to watch out for that stuff. Okay, you need to tilt this bracket really hard. Yeah, it's pretty tight. There you go. There we go. Like yeah. that. And then put some nuts on the other side. Okay, Mark, what do you need? The top just needs to get worked in. Why is it Bubble Boy has his side down and we don't? Maybe we should be Bubble Boy. Perfect. Yep. Put, put the top ones on. Okay, I'm in. Wonderful. All right, we got the leaf spring perches into place. Pretty good there, Bubbles. Yeah, solid. One day the old man won't have to be out here doing this. <laughs> I'll have uh, Vinnie Barbarino and Cousin Dougie. 
Couldn't oh, get any better than that. You know, Bubble Boy is doing a pretty darn good job on this one. I know he's anxious to get promoted from Bubble Boy back up to Vinny Barbarino. I don't blame him. I wanted to be like Vinny Barbarino when I was his age. Douglas, if you want to let it down. So these go through a relief in the body. This is the rubber insulator. This one goes through the body. This one's going to go through the leaf spring itself. There's going to be another one that's up in the body that goes right here. Then this comes down around it like that, locks everything into place. Go ahead and come on down, Doug. We're just okay. going to bring the car down now to meet the height of the shackles in the back. Right there. There's no grease on this. Why is there no grease on that? I'm stomping somebody in the neck. Bubble boy will never graduate without grease on the outside of that bushing. Now, I was hoping that this wouldn't happen, but you may have to stay Bubble Boy for another install. <laughs> I don't see how forgetting a bushing like makes me stay Bubble Boy. I, it just doesn't seem fair to me. I don't understand. <laughs> no, you're sorry. Screw me over. <laughs> well, I didn't screw you over. You didn't grease the bushing, you know? In all seriousness, one of the things that I like to do is have a plan B in a situation where somebody gets demoted. So like I did end up taking him from Vinny Barbarino down to Bubble Boy. And I couldn't find anything, should he mess up, that would take him lower than that, that Travolta had done. I thought, well, maybe the character in, in Carrie where he's driving that Camaro, but even that guy was too cool for Bubble Boy. So I was watching a movie the other night, if you guys have seen it, it's called Cabin Fever, all right? The cop shows up, the cool cop, Winston. I'm watching Winston, I'm thinking, yeah, Bubble Boy is Winston. Oh, you're the party man. That guy. That's Bubble Boy. OK, graveyard ghouls. Have you been paying attention? Let's see. We learned the standard engine in the Roadrunner is a special 383 cubic inch V8. How much horsepower does it put out? Is it 330, 335, or 340? Think you know the answer? Stay tuned after this brief message from our sponsors and find out how you did. Well, ghouls, how did you do on this one? What is the horsepower output of the standard Roadrunner 383? If you guessed 335, you are correct. The Roadrunner engine is a slightly higher performance engine of the regular 383 Super Commando, which is rated at 330 horsepower. In addition, here's the standard trim for the Roadrunner Coupe. It's durable, all vinyl, that's available in two-tone tan, two-tone blue, or black. In addition to this AM radio with stereo tape player, there's a new AM FM solid state radio with a powerful five and a half watt chassis. Swinging options for us music lovers. Oh, hell, my hands are all greasy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to start it on there for me on this side? I'll just hold it together. Can it, please? Yep. What's wrong with that? Well, there's two that are supposed to go on there. Unless you want to tell Walter Chrysler he made a mistake and there should only be one on there. The Fisher Price man called wants his hair cut back. All right, raise the car up, Rooster. Raise the car up. Here's your chance to redeem yourself, Bubble Boy. All right. OK, I'm going to go that way now. Coming in? I'm going to go forward. Coming in. Towards the back of the car. This mast is so huge, I can't see past it. I know, I know. OK, so you're my eyes, buddy. Yes, sir. Right there. OK. How's our clearance on your side, Hunter? Shift your way. Hold it, Mark. Hold it. Everything's OK. Now, one of the things that I've talked about is the difference between putting a 383 and a 440 in one of these cars when you raise it up from the bottom like the factory did. You think that the 383 would go in, and I always thought that the 383, because it's a, a regular block versus the raised block 440, that it was easier for that reason. It's not easier. It's not any easier at all than a 440K member if both of them have power steering. If one has manual steering or the steering gear isn't in, that thing just falls right in. Shift, shift my way. I'll shift this. I'll shut the damn thing off. Now, you want to shift it that way? How about just gently move it towards but the But Yeah, door? but you dramatically stopped me. I All you take is one of those, not a, like the, I'm sorry. What would you like me to do next? 
Uh, yeah, Doug's an overreactor. We're good for a little bit. Okay. We're gonna go up a little bit. All right. Okay, my side's clear. How you doing? We're good. Oh, this is great. I like having four eyes. Hold it, Mark. Hold it, Mark. I got it. I did. I did. I did hold it. Right here. Oh, Drop it down an inch. Dougie's an overreactor. He always has been. That crazy, over-dynamic stop when a car pulls out a half a mile ahead. I don't need that kind of a signal. I have plenty of time. You could just say, hey, did you notice a car's pulling out? But he doesn't. Both feet go to the ground on some imaginary brake pedal in the passenger seat, and he screams, stop! This, this cautious behavior from a guy who drove back from Marcola, Oregon years ago, three or four decades ago, drunk. And during the curves in a pitch black road that has no road lights would shut his headlights out. And I knew one thing, if I couldn't see the road, unless he's a vampire, he can't see the road either. He's not a bat. You are going purely on God's grace at that moment. This is the guy that overreacts today. Uh, Passenger side, one in. I just heard an ah, oh, I just heard an ah oh from Bubble Boy. Yeah, you can't. No room over there? No, not, there's barely anything. What? It's yeah. at an angle, isn't it? You yeah. Can, do you like me to let it down and straighten out the forklift? We can shift it a little, Hunter. I'm gonna shift it, okay? Okay, yeah. How's that look? You're touching this here. I'm already touching? This. The cable. Other than that, you're good so far, but you're hitting that. Let's, let's raise it, Hunter. Okay. Let's raise it. Okay, Mark, raise it a few inches. Pull your control arm down over the shock. How's your K-member bolt holes lining up? Uh, they're not <laughs> at all. Are you filming? Hi, Riley. <laughs> Isn't this great, Mark? I got one started. My grandma said that your grandma you set your place on doing. fire. Yeah. Thinking, hey, now. Don't you hear hey, now. that? I go, I go, I I'd like to know why Mark calls me the crazy one. You should see him when he gets hungry. He goes, wacko. Hi, Jeffrey. OK, we got all four bolts in place, Mark. All right. You can go ahead and lower the forks down. We're going to put it on the pogo. Lift up on it, Hunter. How are we looking? Looking good, Mark. Can I come on down and get out of here? Yes, sir. Way? Lower it down. That was a battle. Okay, you have to pry it over. Looks like we're done. So they are going to finish installing the transmission cross member. Oh, put the bolts in that. Then they will lower it down and make the upper control we're arm connections that need to be made. No. At that point, we'll be able to lower the car down, put it under its wheels, which we have set in here, and it'll be a roller. And that's going to be great because we can get it over now and we can have the vinyl top. This car's in violet, gets a black vinyl top and black interior, so it's going to be beautiful. 446 barrel four speed, too. So. It's great. Why do I hear a hammer? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's ahead. a good time to call cut. Hey, editor, make sure that we don't see any of that hammering crap. We're supposed to be professionals. <laughs> <God>. <laughs>